Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. It's JJ once again and we're bringing you guys another feature and overview video on a brand new series graphics card. This one is one that I know you guys have been waiting for very patiently and a long time coming. It's for our brand new GTX 670 Direct CU Mini. Uh, so this is an ultra small form factor graphics card that we're going to be taking a look at in terms of some of the unique design characteristics, its performance capabilities, as well as the general topology of the card in itself. So with that, as always, we're going to go ahead and cover the accessories that come included, the card itself, and where it kind of lines up in terms of your considerations for setting up a system, and where it might fit in terms of that build consideration. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and cracked open the box. Uh, just a short amount of accessories here, so pretty straightforward. One is we have an actual PCI Express to PCI Express power adapter. Uh, the card natively supports 8-pin PCI Express. This goes out to 2. Okay. From there, we got the speed setup guide. So this covers all the quick information that you need on how to install your graphic card onto your motherboard. Of course, you can also reference the motherboard manual. And then lastly, right here, we have our GPU tweak utility and driver disk. Make sure to head over to uh, NVIDIA's website for the latest version of the G GeForce Experience software and their driver, as well as support.asus.com for the latest version of GPU tweak, which allows you to overvolt the card, overclock it, adjust fan speeds, and all other tuning aspects related to the GPU. So with that, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the DC Mini itself. All right, guys, so uh, we've reached the focus of really what this video is all about, and that's our brand new GTX 670 DC Mini. So you can see that card right here, and right off the bat, of course, you can see directly next to our current GTX 670 DirectCU 2 graphics card, uh, you can see really what the big standout point is, is this is a card that is ultra small in terms of its overall form factor. It's really focused at users that are looking at small form factor oriented builds, whether that's going to be micro ITX or mini ITX. Um, and actually, in even certain configurations, you could find it just as comfortably installed inside of an ATX based system as well, um, but with the primary focus, of course, being small form factor systems. So the great thing about this is this is really a no compromise based design, is that you still get overall a very impressive base thermal design due to our uh, custom direct contact vapor chamber technology that we have integrated. Plus, we've gone and incorporated an entirely brand new custom fan a solution called our Cooltech fan, which has some interesting design philosophies in terms of giving us flexibility of a fan type that's similar to an impeller, as well as similar to a blower type fan. So we got a lot of flexibility in terms of what we've incorporated for this product. And as always, it's a fully non-reference solution. So that means we have a completely custom PCB and power topology design, just like what you would get in this large high performance DirectCU2 graphics card. So this gives you a little bit of perspective in terms of it comparing to a standard size card in relation to what we have here with the DC Mini and also helps you to pretty much understand that from a specification standpoint there's no real drop down. We're essentially running at the same CUDA cores, we're running the same GDDR5, 2 gigabytes, all the specifications are essentially identical to a standard reference part, um, but with the advantage of it carrying our non-reference design implementation, which is actually going to allow the card to perform faster than a reference-based solution. So we can see right off the bat, it's an ultra small form factor card. We essentially have a card that is 17 centimeters. So that's great when you take into consideration that the reference card is over 23 centimeters, and really it allows for an optimal pairing when used with micro ATX boards, as well as mini ATX boards, where it's not even going to create any overhang off of a mini ITX based solution. Now in terms of the specifications as we already noted we're pretty much looking at a fully spec DTX 670 uh, with the exception that it's of course utilizing a fully non-reference design. So one of the first elements that we can tell from the non-reference design is internally here in this assembly which we're utilizing an entirely new uh, cooling implementation which is still our direct contact philosophy in terms of us taking direct copper and making contact with the GPU die for maximum heat dissipation capabilities um, but we've gone ahead and because of the small form factor, optimize it to actually be vapor chamber based, as well as gone ahead and integrated our entirely new Cooltech fan design. So the Cooltech fan design, um, we're going to show a little bit more information about how it compares to the standard base designs on the market and some of the advantageous uh, aspects of this design implementation. So you can see we have some information here on the Cooltech fan compared to some of the other fan designs that are on the market. So first up we can see we've got a blower based fan. So this is what you generally see on high performance non-reference, excuse me, uh, reference series graphics cards. A disadvantage of a blower fan though is it going to be it's considerably higher in terms of the acoustic footprint um, as compared to let's say an impeller or an axial based fan design, which is generally going to offer quieter acoustics uh, and within combination when used with multiple fans can offer of course additional cooling performance. It's part of the reason why 
why we don't use uh, blower-based designs on our DirectCU 2 series of graphics cards. So, it, so you can see, of course, it gives us the ability to have high dissipation capabilities. It has a directional um, output that we would prefer, especially within a constrained environment in terms of helping to exhaust outside of the chassis, as we don't have that much airflow within a smaller uh, confined type of chassis configuration where we don't necessarily have to worry if the primary cooling solution on the GPU is not exhaust oriented. Um, but it being a small form factor oriented focus uh, that we have for the DC Mini, as well as for micro ATX and for mini ITX based chassis, we want to prioritize not only the cooling aspects, but the acoustics of the card. So when we take a look at an axial based fan design, um, you of course can have a low acoustic footprint, so the card is operating quietly. Um, the airflow though is, is not necessarily as good. Um, generally the RPM ratio is going to sometimes be about half, and this is where it can be maximized of course with the secondary fan, um, and as well of course we have a change in terms of how the actual dispersion of the airflow occurs in comparison to a blower based design. And this is where it's going to be critical to sometimes be able to tie in additional airflow in your chassis configuration to help push out and exhaust some of the air that's being dispersed from the heat sink assembly. Um, with our brand new cool tech fan design, though we kind of amalgamate or, or bring together a hybrid based design that really complements um, this small form factor high performance card, but also specific to a more constrained environment. So of course we keep the acoustics low so we have that quiet operation. We introduce a high uh, level of airflow dispersion capability and we've also introduced the ability to actually have the fan um, create a wider airflow air Area, not only actually downward, um, but actually in the horizontal plane as well. So that helps us to go ahead and push air outside of the chassis, as well as help to bring cool air and focus in on cooling the actual GPU and that vapor chamber. So of course, if you guys want to see a little bit of uh, the comparative performance between how the Cooltech fan works as compared to another type of fan design, you can make sure to click on over our demonstration video and you'll see some more information on that. So with that, we're going to jump back, take a look at the DC Mini in itself, uh, break the card out, take a, take a look at some of the topology and the non-reference design aspects. Okay guys, so um, quickly before we actually break open the card and take a look at the internal topology, we just want to cover display output. You can see that the card, while being once again small in form factor, is very rich in terms of total connectivity. So we have four digital displays, so we can fully support anything that's out there on the market, whether it's going to be a 3D vision enabled panel like our VG series. Um, you can support 120 hertz, 144 hertz in terms of high refresh rate support. You can support a 3D as I noted. HDMI specification is the latest uh, that's available, so you have full high resolution uh, pass through that's available in that respect. So of course we've got the uh, dual link digital DVI, we then have the secondary DVI, full size HDMI and full size DP. So pretty much in terms of connectivity, everything that you would want on a high end graphics card. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the DC Mini. Okay guys, so we've gone ahead and opened up the DirectCU Mini graphics card, and as you can see here, we have the primary heatsink and fan assembly. Um, so like always, actually DC Mini cards are actually very easy to be able to work with. Um, this card actually doesn't have that many uh, points of contact in terms of the screws to keep the retention against the PCB board, so it's just six screws and then four screws at the top I.O. to be able to go ahead and remove and be able to access the center. So as you can see here, we have a full unibody heatsink assembly, which goes ahead and serves as an additional point of dissipation for the heat that travels to the actual base plate that we have here. Now this is an actual vapor chamber base, so we have uh, optimal high performance uh, heat connectivity that flows from the GPU die into the base of the vapor chamber. And then from there, of course, is then cooled by the Cooltech fan, which gives us not only that downward firing cooling effect, but then helps to disperse it across the entire card. And even here on the sides, we can see that uh, we have some actual inlets um, that allow for optimal cooling uh, to go ahead and be able to bring some additional airflow into the overall cooling of the card. And of course these are all contact points directly for uh, parts of the card that produce more heat such as these are for the memory modules, so the two gigs of GDDR5 that we have on the card. And here we can give you a little bit more of a perspective in regards to the unibody heatsink assembly. So with that, we're going to go actually go ahead and take a look at the DC Mini's PCB board itself and take a look at some of the non-reference design aspects of the card. Okay, so here we can see we've got the GTX 670, the core of the card itself that contains the GPU die as well as some of the 
the memory itself and of course the non-reference VRM components. So this card continues to feature our SAP or our super alloy power uh, power components that we integrate on the board. So that's going to be our super alloy capacitors. You can actually see that these are 5K rated. So that's actually twice generally what competitors are using on their products, which are usually 2K, uh, 2K rated. We have of course our super alloyed uh, chokes. And so these are our inductors. These are actually made of a fully uh, specialized alloy formula, which allows for superior efficiency, reduced temperatures, as well as higher power output, giving us overall improved stability and performance for the card, especially in relation to the GPU boost. And then of course, we have our secondary uh, section of the VRM works in conjunction with the inductors, and that's going to be the MOSFET, so the super alloyed MOS. So these of course allow for not only higher voltage uh, levels, but overall superior performance and efficiency. So overall, you can see that we've still continued that even though it's small inside, you still not compromise in terms of total performance or even the quality of what we're doing with the card. Still features a great quality PCB. And if we go ahead and flip it over, we're going to see that we have some very unique aspects. We've got a couple of different things going on here. First and foremost, we continue to use our POSCAP based design, which we've used in the past, which has sometimes been referred to as our back to back design. So it's uh, on the back of the card and makes contact with the back of the GPU die. And so that helps to provide additional capacitance or stored power for the GPU when it's under either GPU boost or attempting to be pushed to higher clock speeds. So that's a great benefit there. In addition, we've gone ahead and incorporated this new direct power design, which helps to reduce uh, the impedance of the card and also reduce the overall core temperature for the back of the PCB board and this entire section. So um, you get not only improved efficiency with improved performance, uh, but you're also going to go ahead and get reduced temperatures for the entire PCB board itself because we're offsetting the buildup of temperature, which would normally correlate directly behind there and elevating it directly to the direct power and when the reduction of impedance helps to also reduce, uh, reduce the resistance and improve the overall temperature and the overall efficiency of the card. And that's a very key point that we want to keep in mind, especially for a small form factor card and smaller form factor chassis where we have limited airflow. Anything we can do to reduce temperature buildup is always going to be a positive. Now lastly, of course, we can see here we still maintain uh, and have our power LEDs, which give you a quick visual indicator to let you know if you've successfully gone ahead and connected power to the card. Uh, if they are, they'll go ahead and light up red, uh, excuse me, they'll go ahead and light up green, and if you don't have power corrected, uh, correctly connected, it will go ahead and light up red. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and put it back together and take a look at a little bit at what some of your build considerations might be uh, for either building micro ATX or mini ATX systems. Okay guys, so uh, we've gone ahead and put our DC Mini card back together and you can see that we've actually got two motherboards out here uh, where the DC Mini is really kind of targeted to align with. So for you guys that are kind of wondering where this might be considered from in terms of a build standpoint, one of course we have a mini ITX base board like we've got here with our P8Z77-I. And you can of course see that uh, with it being such a small form factor card, it really has an optimal level in terms of uh, the overall layout. So you can see it doesn't cause any type of overhang, which fits really, really well in terms of where the card is going to be lined up with it. So complementary, of course, perfect to many ITX-based solutions. So if you're going to go ahead and be using a chassis, let's say like the PCQ series uh, from Lan Li, uh, or a Silverstone SG series, it's a perfect setup where those chassis are even designed for an ultra small size graphics card, being able to maintain the high end performance but with an ultra small board. Now for some of you guys that are maybe a little bit more focused at higher end types builds, you want a little bit more flexibility, maybe a little bit more storage capabilities, uh, as well as expansion capabilities, you've got of course micro ATX. Now uh, there's a lot of different high performance micro ATX chassis on the market and it's still nice to be able to consider having a smaller size card to be able to give you more flexibility in terms of how you work with the board, how it's laid out, and even visually from the fact that it doesn't kind of overpower the board. So if we take a look once again and we put it here on our gene board, you can see it's actually got a really nice look to it in terms of that, you know, we can still actually see our full PCH. Uh, it's not impacting any overall the connectivity. And keep in mind that of course with the DC Mini, it still does even fully support uh, SLI based configuration. So if you wanted to put two onto this board, you could also even go that route. So you've got a lot of flexibility with the way that this card can be integrated on both micro ATX and mini ITX based solutions. So overall, you know, either type of configuration that you're choosing would work without any issues. And of course, even if you want to integrate this onto an ATX based chassis, you could also go ahead and do that as well. But optimally, um, the design, the form factor, everything in terms of what we've done here is really designed to complement these smaller form factor based designs. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Okay guys, so wrapping things up, 
Uh, like we talked about, we've got our GTX 670 DC Mini. It's a brand new graphics card that uh, we've taken a lot of feedback from the community and people that have said, hey, we'd love to see something that's a little bit more specific uh, in terms of the overall design and the footprint for smaller form factor systems, and that's inherently what we have here. So we've got a great card in terms that we're not compromising on the overall performance capabilities because we're utilizing, um, you know, essentially the second highest in GPU part that you have for single GPU on the NVIDIA side of the fence, the GTX 670. So that's going to be outstanding gaming capability when you pair that with either a 1080p panel or even QHD panels in terms of 2560 by 1440. You've got a very competent part. Uh, there is, you know, pretty much almost no overall compromise minus that the card because of the reduced form factor that you're going to be dealing with in terms of dissipation area for the heatsink assembly and the reduced thermal environment that you're going to have within a small form factor chassis it means that you might not necessarily be able to overclock the card. Uh, you know, it's really targeted at being able to give you outstanding performance pretty much out the box but not necessarily a focus at aggressive overclocking. But with that in mind, you still get better than reference performance. The card is going to consistently boost higher than a reference card. That's going to provide you with faster frame rate, reduced latency, and overall improved performance, as well as even the tension performance is quite strong. Uh, in our testing here in our environment within a chassis configuration, we were consistently seeing temperatures between about 71 to about 73C under full gaming load consistently. So overall, that's very cool in terms of the overall temperatures. And from the acoustic standpoint, it was essentially almost inaudible uh, within a normally configured system uh, where you weren't pretty much hearing the card over anything else. So overall we maintain our focus that when we give you a non-reference design and our direct implementation of it being cool and quiet. And of course, underneath all of that, we still maintain all the ultra high-end components, such as our super alloy power capacitors, MOSFETs, and inductors, or some people call them chokes. So like always, we'd love to hear feedback from you guys, whether it's here at the YouTube page in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you when I can. You can also make sure to hit us up on our North American Facebook pages, as well as our North America Twitter pages. And if you guys enjoy the video, please make sure and like it. And of course, if you want to continue to see more videos here on the channel, please make sure and subscribe.